Uh, the final speaker of this session, Li Chen Fu from National Taiwan University. Take it away. Okay, so this is the joint work with, uh, with the RNTU Hospital. Okay, I'm from National Taiwan University. This is the alliance. Just, I'm just trying to show that this robot is applying to um, two groups. One is uh, stroke patients, one is the uh, frozen shoulder patients groups. Okay, so we have some clinical trials. And I, w I want to also demonstrate the um, later uh, research about the, uh, how to bilateral, using the bilateral arm uh, training to help the uh, cell promote uh, your own uh, recovery. Um, I want to mention that I stay in Berkeley from 1983 to 1987. Um, I believe Shanker uh, came from MIT, joined Berkeley 1982. So uh, I'm very lucky uh, to have uh, Shanker uh, arrived Berkeley earlier than me. <laughs> so I can, I can uh, uh, ask uh, Shanker to supervise uh, our, my PhD thesis. And that time, I, I think uh, Shanker just started to invest in all the robotic equipment. So at that time, uh, I was given this robots, uh, rhinos, okay, and this, uh, that time probably is uh, the best equipment we can get besides Pumas, okay. So, uh, but of course, I'm not, my thesis is not on the uh, robotics, I'm on the pure adaptive control theory. So I'm just a hobby, uh, I would like to play with the, uh, with the robots and uh, really appreciate Shanker to give me the opportunity to play with the robots. And later in the uh, summers, uh, I, I went to Macrobot in Mountain Views. I stayed there three months. And uh, with these two uh, opportunities, that opened a, a, a whole avenue for my robotic research after I get back to the NTU. Yeah, this, uh, my, my, my fingers uh, got caught in the, uh, the gear, so. <laughs> yeah, so this is a very dangerous robot, yeah. As a matter of fact, yeah, okay. But uh, really, this is uh, uh, this is uh, emerged uh, really started my research uh, after I get back to the uh, National Taiwan University. I, I started my whole lab, uh, robotic lab. Besides my continue my research on, on adaptive control, I also do this. Okay, and uh, the reason why I'm uh, also fascinated by the robotic uh, rehabilitating robotics, I think there's uh, more evidence about the effect of the robotic rehabilitations. And actually, uh, as a matter of fact. Uh, the, the world is aging, so, so uh, more people are facing the problem that they re need rehabilitation. Especially, they, they said, uh, when you grow older and older, live older and older, there's more possibility to be uh, hit by stroke at one time in, in your lifetime. Um, so, um, so stroke patients or frozen shoulder, I want to say later, so they, they uh, actually need this uh, rehab, robotic rehabilitation uh, uh, to help them to recover some more. And uh, why exoskeleton robots will be uh, a good uh, subject to study is because this kind of robots can specifically rehabilitate your joint motions uh, and particularly the interjoint coordinations. So it's different from the, uh, the like uh, MIT Menas, okay? They are uh, distal joint, okay? That is the, the robot only holds your ha uh, hand and do the uh, rehabilitations. That cannot reach this kind of uh, rehabilitation levels. And measuring the, uh, sim uh, simultaneously you can measure your angle and velocity, so you can also uh, assess your functional recovery, okay? Now you, have to, you don't have to go post uh, evaluations, okay? You can uh, online do the evaluations. And of course you can uh, put some kind of force torque sensors uh, among it, okay? So you can measure the pain or the, the reactions of the patients. And this is the uh, first group of, we tried out uh, stroke patients. As a matter of fact, in Taiwan, uh, this is the main cause of people getting disabled, the adults, okay? And, uh, and they're ranked the third to consume the national insurance uh, uh, resources. And uh, the cost uh, annual is 18 billion NT dollars, okay? So it's a huge, okay? And roughly 50% of the stroke patients suffer the uh, function loss of the upper limb, okay? So that's uh, why we want to do this. And this is the uh, chart uh, provided by uh, a company called Hokuma. And this is the uh, fun motor functions, and this is the time recoveries. And so this is the yellow, the green, uh, orange lines uh, shows that with the robotic uh, rehabilitations, you can get uh, uh, recoveries faster and uh, higher. So with this, compared with this uh, natural or standard uh, rehabilitations, seems this is more advantageous. And this is the some uh, evidence that uh, when you have this kind of mechanical, uh, very intensive repetitions, 
then the, this uh, uh, functional MRI, the brain activity will be higher. So that's uh, also evidence showing that why ro robotic reputations will be very promising. And this is the first, uh, uh, first generation of uh, the arms we, we built. Uh, this is actually adapted from uh, industrial arms. So this is not particularly designed for, but it's a kind of exoskeleton arms. Okay, it's built almost 10 years ago. So we patterned that uh, and it's a high uh, number of joints. So this just gives you the ideas. Okay, um, so this have the two modes, one is passive control mode, one is the active control mode. Okay, so, uh, so this arms almost uh, follow your bone structures. So uh, you can uh, particularly want to uh, exercise which joint, okay, that can be very precise, okay. But uh, for this kind of stroke, pa uh, rehab uh, stroke patient rehabilitations, uh, very important is uh, you have to motivate these people. So usually they, they associate with some kind of game, uh, game systems. Okay, so we also develop some kind of uh, virtual game. Okay, so when the arms are exercising, uh, the, the, when the robot arm exercising the human's arm, you better have the uh, met, try to motivate the people how to do it or why they, they need to do it. Okay, so I'll, let me just show. So this is kind of game. Okay, that is when when it's. Uh, doing things, it better let them know, have some feeling that what they're doing, okay. So uh, we have done the, the clinical trials. We have uh, 20 uh, healthy subjects that's uh, required. Then we go to the uh, uh, stroke patients, uh, 11 for robot treatments, uh, 11, nine for non-robot treatments. And uh, it takes a whole year to finish that, okay. And uh, what we conclude is uh, for acute patients, this seems to be more effective uh, using robotic uh, rehabilitations. But what I want to say is another group, this is more exciting, uh, that is uh, a frozen shoulder group of patients, okay? And frozen shoulder is uh, known as uh, adhesive capsulitis, okay? Um, just like here, okay, this is a natural healthy person, this is shoulder joint, and this is uh, adhesive joints, okay, that is frozen shoulders. Okay, it's most prevalent upper limb orthopedic <coughs> disorders. This, about the general population, 2% to 5% people Okay, suffer from this uh, uh, frontal shoulders. I don't know how many here have been hit by this uh, frontal shoulder before, but the, the symptom is uh, limited range of motions and pain usually uh, happens when you're doing your, your exercise. Okay, they said for uh, 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 some people, uh, even higher, some group of people, uh, uh, yeah, okay, so this is just, uh, just showing that this is another bigger group. So, um, so this is uh, just a uh, uh, comparison with the conventional versus robust-assisted, robot okay? The conventional therapy, you need uh, uh, adequate intensity, high repetitions, and a very important is experience dependent. But now, you, you, according to your experience, I guess when you go to the clinic, it's really hard to ask the therapist to really help you to do through the whole uh, the period of uh, the therapies, right? So. Uh, actually, using robot, uh, robot system, you can even have uh, stable qualities, and simultaneously you can do the functional assessment, as I mentioned earlier. Okay, and the, um, you can really save. So it's kind of like a uh, medical automations. Okay, using the uh, uh, robot, and so this is the second version robot we built. Okay, is a uh, eight degree freedoms, and this uh, large ro uh, range of motion. This range of motion is bigger, even bigger than the the one arm power. Are provided by they are made by uh, Hokomas. Okay, and uh, you can uh, so here we, we test on the uh, uh, seven patients uh, from shoulder patients. And according to the uh, therapist, they provide us uh, four type of passive reputation therapies. Okay, and uh, and so, so you will wonder if I don't have to go through this uh, therapies, then what happens? Okay, usually some people are too busy to really go to the clinic for the therapies. It sometimes it could take one more. Uh, more than one year to recover or, or to have just sim the symptom improvements, okay? So, uh, but using this uh, therapies, you can cut down to six weeks, okay? Or uh, a month and a half. So this is the uh, four type of uh, uh, therapies uh, suggested by the uh, therapist uh, uh, from our NTU hospital. Okay, let me just show you, this is the, um, This is the uh, uh, real uh, recording, video recording of the uh, one of the. Okay, one of our. 
patients. Okay, so I want to emphasize that uh, our flexions can really reach a full range. Okay, so uh, this is uh, a lot of times uh, not uh, nowadays uh, the rehabilitation uh, from uh, any other uh, rehabilitation devices or robot arm that can that can really attain this. Okay, so we claim that uh, this is probably uh, one of the few that can really help uh, uh, people to rehabilitate the, the their fallen shoulders. Okay, so this is a call uh, shoulder flexion extensions, and this is a horizontal abductions. Okay, so really can help people do all the rest, all the full range uh, exercising. Okay, and uh, according to this, uh, seven patients. Okay, and uh, as I said, it takes um, uh, six weeks. Okay, with the ag aggressive therapy. Um, usually take three times per week and each time is a, a half an hour, okay? So it totally is 18 times. Uh, so these are seven patients, okay? The blue shows that they, they start with the, uh, say, the worst is uh, starting from only by 45 degrees. That is, only can reach this. But finally, after two weeks, more, a little average is two weeks, they can reach the full range, okay? So, and this is the, uh, the uh, profile showing these, uh, how people can recover. Okay, these are 18 times, okay? so. So we believe, um, and this is the control group that without our robotic help, uh, even after 15 times, it's only uh, very close, but it's still not, not yet to the uh, full range. Uh, later, we believe that uh, using our intact arms, okay, we can promote the functional recovery of the impact impaired arms, okay, using so-called so symmetric motion training. Okay. And uh, a lot of times, you can even uh, some more highly motivated. You're using yourself uh, uh, voluntary motion to, to help you uh, to rehabilitate your impaired arms. Okay, so we call it so bilateral arm trainings. Okay, and with this kind of uh, therapy, you can ensure the physical coordinations. Okay, of, of upper limb. Okay, and you can also evaluate because you can compare your inter, uh, intact arm and your impaired arms. So this is just a system overviews, okay? And I uh, just want to show you that, that there's uh, some theory behind, okay? <laughs> you can show that uh, Leopold, typical Leopold function analysis and show that the system works, okay? So I, w I just want to skip this uh, details. Um, this is the some, okay, uh, let me show. This is some active control. Okay, that is, uh, you can do this. Um, the active control of this or uh, compared with the compliance control of the industrial arms, I believe this is more challenging because the, the control have to subject your uh, various joints uh, constraints because humans have the various desire for joint motions, right? So you have to have a full range of compliance. So this is a will be more challenging. Let me, uh, because time limited, I just uh, skip this. So uh, the conclusion is, is uh, we, we can successfully apply this uh, rehabilitation arm to the uh, two groups. One is uh, stroke patients. Uh, people focus on this uh, mostly, but uh, uh, relatively fewer on the frozen shoulder. But as I've shown, the frozen shoulder groups is even much larger groups, okay? And uh, we believe commercially that's probably uh, more opportunity to commercialize this, okay? So finally, uh, let me just uh, thank uh, Shankar. Uh, uh, Thanks for showing me to how to become a first level scholars. Although I'm still not uh, uh, yet, but I, I will use the full life to try to learn how to become a first level scholars and say happy birthday, Shankar. Thank you so much. I think we have time for one question before we do our break. Right here. John? So, what did it mean? Uh, what did you mean by passive? Uh, therapy and the active therapy. The passive okay. one was just trying to stretch your arm out. Okay. The, the trajectory and the arm just, uh, uh, just uh, automatically bring the human arms according to full uh, exercise this, uh, the trajectories. But uh, With some force control, feedback to make sure you don't rip his arm off or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we have some protection devices that you can stop the, uh, the arm motions at any time. So you have uh, some kind of, kind of stop switches or the, uh, the uh, therapist can uh, use the software to stop at any time, yeah. So protection devices are very important, safety devices are very important. And the active one? Active one means that humans uh, moves, so, okay. So um, 
so the robot RNs are just passive. Robot RNs become passive, okay, but human RNs actively move. So, so, uh, active, so active has uh, three types, as a matter of fact. Active, active assisted, and active resisted. Active assisted means uh, when you do things and uh, try to exercise some trajectory, and you are probably not able to do it, the system will help provide some kind of assisting forces. And active resistance means when you have uh, some muscle forces, you want to strengthen muscle forces, then the system try to bring some resisting force. So you can, you can use a little bit more to, to train your muscle, muscles. So this is the next uh, workout equipment then? Yeah. yeah okay. Kind of, so here you don't have to use some kind of virtual game. Instead, you just use it like a gym when you run on the treadmills, right? And just, uh, yeah, that's, so that's kind of things, yeah. All right, let's thank Lee Chin one more time. Thank you very thank you. much.